Hello, this is Bern, and if you're ready for passionate and sustainable love but feel disappointed to see that the guys showing up in your dates are less than enthusiastic about moving things forward with you, are wasting your time and frankly killing your vibe, my video today is gonna share with you what are the five specific boundaries you need to set as a high value woman that will not only separate you from the rest and make you stand out above all other women, but also turn you into his clear and obvious choice. Hello, this is Bern. Welcome to BernMendez.com. If this is your first time here and you want to learn how to attract your ideal life partner without the need for gimmicks, manipulation, or silly techniques, make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Men come pre-wired from a very early age to compete and work hard to earn a place in society and to obtain what they want, so much so that the effort a guy takes to earn something, whether it's a material object, a goal or even a relationship is essential for him to develop the emotional connection to the value of what he's working to get. The first mindset shift you need to grasp if you want to be far more valuable to men is that, well, you don't want to play hard to get or trick him in shady ways so he goes out of his way for no reason at all. You do need to be firmer in setting the boundaries that will make him value you rather than take you for granted. The first principle that can make or break your efforts to set a boundary with a man is the magnet principle. Imagine that you put a car for sale in an auction and that car has a flat tire, uh, the paint is chipping and the engine is not running great. But you still put it in the market for twice what cars in its class are running for. What do you usually get if this happens? The answer is crickets. Why would someone who can get a car that has more bells and whistles pay twice as much for the same thing. It just doesn't happen. What this means to you is that if you want to be able to set strong boundaries with men, the higher your attractive factor, the stronger your magnet, the easier you will find it to set those boundaries because you'll have enough demand where if you set the boundaries, guys still continue showing up. If you don't have a strong enough magnet, that means that you can set all the boundaries you want, but no guy's gonna want to step up to them, or the guys will step up to them are guys you're not interested in. The good news is that the determining factor in how strong your magnet is, is not your age, it's not your weight, and it's not your DNA. It is the strength of your radiance. And radiance is something that comes from within and is expressed to the outside world. Now, there's many things, and I have many videos on the subject, I'll link some under the description, that will allow you to be a stronger magnet, but I can share two right now that will make a big difference, a big dent in your ability to set strong boundaries because you're more attractive. Number one is the quality and flow and femininity of your movements. The more unrepressed you are, the more flowing and open, the more inviting you are with your breath, your movements, the quality of the way you even look at someone, the stronger attraction force within you. The second thing that will strengthen the quality of your magnet is the ability that you have to hold eye contact and smile with generosity to a guy. If you want to be able to set stronger boundaries, make sure to remember that the stronger your radiance, the easier the entire flow will go. Before I go into the five boundaries that I'm sharing with you today, if you wanna take the concepts of this video further that I can share with you right now, and you want to embody the changes, not just intellectually get them, you can hit the first link to the description of this video, you'll see a page that looks like this. If you enter your name and email, you can start watching my free masterclass right away. First boundary is the boundary of vision. Imagine you call an Uber with your app, and it's one of those shared Ubers, and when you get in the car, you realize that the person traveling in the car is going to a location that's 100 miles away from where you're going, and that's the first place you're going to. It makes no sense whatsoever. Why would you waste three hours in a car that's going to a different location? Well, the boundary of vision says that if you want to spend time with men, if you want to start dating consciously, you need to find out very early in the process what is the destination, if any, that the guy you're spending and investing time with is going to. Because if the guy is going to a different city than you ever intend to visit, there is no need to flirt with them, to go on endless dates, and there's no need to wait to ask those questions. So the first question you need to learn to ask early in the process, and I mean before you go into your first date, is what are you looking for in a relationship? When you ask that question, you'll find out that the guy has either great idea of where he's going and that place is the same place you're going to, he has no idea where he's going to or he's going to a different destination. So the first kind 
is the only guy you're gonna spend time with. The other two would be a waste of your time. Number two is the boundary of time. We all like spontaneity, but when the spontaneity becomes a way of being, when a guy cannot plan ahead, when you're getting the message at 8.59 p.m. on a Friday saying, SUP question mark, you wanna hang out? That is far less exciting for you than if a guy messages you on a Tuesday saying, hey, I would love to connect with you. How was Friday for you? Now, when you take the time to A, have a life that is full of activities, meaning on a Friday night, you have something to do, even if that thing to do is connecting with yourself, spending time doing something you enjoy, and the guy messages you, you have a legitimate excuse to say, no thanks, I have plans right now, but I'm available, and then X date. I would love to connect with you. Next time you reach out, please let me know three days ahead. That will make sure that I can make space in my calendar because I would love to connect with you. When you set a boundary of respecting the time that you have, guys will do one of two things. They'll either respect and value your time more than they did before and step it into that way, or they'll let you know that they can't do that, that you're too uptight, that you're wrong for wanting to have a clear boundary in time, which means either way you win. One steps up, the other one is not a fit for you. Third boundary is the boundary of pursuit. There's guys who like mechanical watches and collect them. And there's guys who don't care, they can wear an Apple watch, which is very functional, has more functionality actually than a mechanical watch, but it's not the same thing. It just isn't. If you're a watch lover, you understand that there's intricacies and there's complications in watches that make them an invaluable piece of art. Just like watches, there's gonna be guys who are into pursuing women, and there's gonna be guys who are into being pursued by women. You want to find out early in the process if the guy that you're connecting with is type A or type B. Why? Because I'm assuming if you're watching my videos right now that you are probably the kind of woman who prefers for a guy to clearly pursue her than to take on that role and pursue him. <laughs> so here's what you can do. You can ask a guy a question on a date. What is exciting to you when you date someone? and he's gonna share some ideas about that with you. And then you can volunteer your own answer if he doesn't ask it back, which is, I feel excited when a guy takes on a leadership position in the dating process and initiates the process, plans dates, and asks me out. You're not asking for the guy to chase you. You're not asking for the guy to smother you. You're not asking for the guy to asphyxiate you, which is a different kind of problem altogether. You're asking for the guy to take the initiator role in a process that will make you relax and enjoy it more than if you're unaware of what his intentions are or if you're having to remind him of your existence the entire time. Now, some guys will be excited about it and let you know that's something they can step into. Some guys will not like it and let you know early on that that's not the thing to do, that you should ask him out and pursue him. And then you have a choice to make. Do you want to connect with a guy who has the capacity and the, let's call it coglioni, it's an Italian word, you can Google it, to step on and be the pursuer, or do you want to do that for him? My recommendation is, especially as you develop your strong magnet, that you only date guys who have a capacity to pursue you with dignity and with class, instead of guys who want you to do their work. Number four is the boundary of physical touch and sex. It's very likely that the guy will want to initiate physical touch and sex before you're ready or before you feel the stronger emotional connection with them. When you are able to say thank you, but here's what needs to happen for me to become physically involved with you, here's what needs to happen for me to have sex with you, then he gets a chance to know that there is a path to that promised land, but that path isn't just showing up, that path isn't just asking you on a date, that path isn't just sweet talking your ear that night, that path has to be built with trust, with emotional connection, and with hard work, which by the way, creates more emotional connection between both of you, which means he's far less likely to connect with you sexually and leave because now he cares more about you. So the way to do that is simple. Early in the process, you let him know that you are the kind of woman who loves physical touch, loves physical connection, and it takes you longer than some women to get there. Now, there's gonna be guys who are into physically connecting with you early on, or they can't date you. And there's gonna be guys who are willing to delay gratification, which is a valuable principle for you to find out early on in the process if he's able to do that. If he can't do that, there's so many more problems he will have in life. The late gratification is an indicator of his capacity to be disciplined in life. Because here's the thing, if a guy's telling you that he's looking for a lifelong partner and he can't wait a few months to have sex with you, that's showing you something that might be a mismatch. So when you share with a guy that it takes you longer to connect with him physically, whether it's kissing or whether it's making out or whether that's having sex with him, then he gets a chance to 
pace himself and either invest in getting to know you or disqualify himself early on in the process. My recommendation for sex is that you don't do that until you're in an exclusive relationship with them so that there's more safety around you and him, there's more emotional connection, and there's also your ability to gauge who he really is before you get attached to him in a way that might come back and haunt you if he's not the right guy for you. The fifth boundary is the boundary of exclusivity. Imagine that you're shopping for a home, and as you arrive to this cool home that you seem to like, the person that's selling it tells you that if you want to have the possibility of purchasing that home, you need to stop your entire home search that day, right then, right now. That would seem absurd, and that would also make you think, what the hell? Why would someone want me to make a decision right now of something that I'm not ready to make a decision on. The same way, there's gonna be guys who want you to become exclusive right away, maybe not have the courage to say, hey, be my girlfriend, but if you wanna date me, you can't date anyone else. That is a Russian roulette risk that I implore you to not take. Here's why. If the guy is really confident about himself, and he's also in the path of finding his best option, he's going to have no problem in for a period of time get to know you unexclusively as you get to connect with other men. If he's so strong and so awesome, you will choose him. But if he wants you to stop dating other guys, get off the apps very early in the process, that is a red flag that I would urge you to step away from. The more time you have to get to know him and other guys within reason, the better decision you will make, the more data you'll have, and the less likely it is that you'll have second thoughts about it. Next time you connect with someone, let him know that it's gonna take a little while for him to connect with you, to be physical with you, and definitely to be exclusive with you. If you play your cards right by A, increasing your intensity, increasing your magnet strength, and B, setting these clear boundaries that make him have to work in a smart and necessary way to create emotional connection with you, he will value you more than other women who don't have the confidence, the strength, or the worth to step up for themselves this way. If you find that this is helpful and you wanna go deeper than I can share on this video, again, click on the first link on the description of this video so you can learn how to embody these changes, not just in your head, but in your life experience. If you like this video, please click like or thumbs up and subscribe to my channel so you can be notified of new episodes as they come out. Last but not least, if you're listening to me right now and you've tried the law of attraction, you've tried shamanic cleanses, you've tried going to therapy, you've bought books and nothing seems to really be changing things around, you might highly benefit from getting hand-holding and coaching. Second link on the description of this video will allow you to connect with me to find out where we're fit to work together. Thank you so much for allowing me to your heart, into your home, and as always, I challenge you to live a full and a conscious life.